Hi guys, it's Candace from Beacon Hill Books and I'm here to break all of the video recommendation rules. I'm using a handheld phone and my lighting is not good and I'm still going to do this video because I won't have time the rest of this week. I'm going to be going to Maine to see my sister for the long weekend and I needed to update everybody on my books. There's just too much goodness going on and I can't wait until next week to post. So this is going to be a little bit different than my other videos and I kind of was thinking that I just feel that my monthly wrap ups I'm constantly talking about the same books over and over and so maybe I should just go to more of a weekly format instead. Um, a lot of the booktubers I follow do that and I feel like there's less repetition. So what are your thoughts on that? I try and keep my monthly updates brief but it still feels repetitive to me. I don't know. Anyways, I am currently reading, buddy reading, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin with D from Books and Quirks. We have two more chapters left, guys, and we are going to finish it tomorrow. It's, it's, it is good. Like, I understand the hype and it's, exciting and I'm just wondering if it's going to end on a cliffhanger. It's very difficult to explain. All I will say is uh, D figured out about 50% in there's an appendix in the back which I think I remembered after the fact she said that that other people mentioned it and I'm not sure how to explain without spoiling too much but it does have to do with a sort of interesting season um, it has to do with people with certain powers and natural elements um, and a sort of dystopian slash fantastical world. There is obelisks in the sky. There are people that can travel and turn people into stone. They can travel through stone. Um, so it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I have a feeling I will be picking up number two shortly. I've read some good fantasy books recently and as much as I love The Great Coats because it's really light and fluffy and I want to get to that first, I think I'll get to the second one in this series next. Right, I'm going to flip this around for the next part. The next book I'm reading and I'm buddy reading this with Liz from Book Learning is A Team of Rivals and we are uh about 522 pages in and although this book says it's 950 pages on goodreads there is about 150 pages of notes so we're actually getting down to it um so we're reading a chapter a night and the chapters are pretty brief um we are at a part where lincoln has just released the emancipation proclamation and all of the chapters are have a quote from something in the book and then they're about 20 to 30 pages long. Some of the chapter headings have pictures in them which are really cool and then there's a few little parts. I think there's only two of these that have picture like full blown pictures if I can find it. So a really neat picture of Abe here. Um, here are some people that he worked with pictures um, but here are some really cool pictures here. Um, here's Mary Lincoln. Here's Lincoln with Tad um, who re he really becomes the primary caregiver for uh, when Willie dies because Mary's just overcome with complete grief and here's Seward who plays a major part in Lincoln's cabinet of Secretary of the State. Um, he really is his closest friend and confidant. Um, he did so much great things for our country and I had never even heard his name. And I'll just show you, oh, this guy I do not like, McClellan. I won't get into that here, Frederick Douglass, but I love this picture. Um, so this is when Lincoln and his son are walking around uh, 
and jubilation celebration. So this book is going well. I'm learning a lot. It's, it is a lot of density and fact, but it's enjoyable still. The other book I'm reading, just happened to be reading, was The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And as I mentioned, The Shadow of the Wind, this is Cemetery of the Books number two. First of all, can we just take a moment for this cover? Because when this cover came, I could not even not read it. Like, look at this. It's beautiful. This dust jacket doesn't go the whole way. It's on both sides. It's so nice. Okay, also, I just got to act two. I just don't want to stop reading it, but I have to. I just happened to be reading this with my Gaudi bookmark that I got when I was in Spain and it's so appropriate seeing as we visit um, the church that Gaudi uh, created and they go to Guell Park. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm 150 pages into this. It's about a guy named David Martin. He is a wonderful author um, but he gets involved in a particularly crazy situation where this guy who's been his benefactor, um, all he ever wanted in life, he's completely rich, but he just wants to publish a book and he can't do it. And so a mutual friend of this publisher, benefactor, um, comes to David and asks it to help him create create the book for him even though he doesn't know that it, he'll have been writing it it's interesting meanwhile the writer David is writing his own book he's in a contract that's like slowly um sucking his soul he's already been in the cemetery of forgotten books um but I don't want to say more than that because I don't want to spoil it's so good guys the chapters are so quick and it's so, it's all takes place in Barcelona, on, La, on and around Las Ramblas. Um, it's very gothic and kind of dark, and I just love it. So good. One more thing I want to show you, and this was a pickup I got from the Little Free Library by my house. Now, as you guys all know, my, one of my favorite books I read this year was The Peabody Sisters by Megan Marshall. And she had released another book about Margaret Fuller that I wanted to pick up. So someone in my neighborhood is reading about some amazing people and I love their taste. So this is The Lives of Margaret Fuller by John Madison. Margaret Fuller is a, an amazing, amazing woman. Um, it's a biography about her and it, as you can read here, it's like, she really tried to propel herself into another echelon of education at a time when that was not really done. And she became um, the first foreign correspondent for American newspaper. So I'd already wanted to learn more about her. And so now that this is just given in my lap, I'm gonna read this instead. This is a picture of the author, John Madison, and note, that oh, he was given the Pulitzer Prize for Eden's Outcast, the story of Louisa May Alcott and her father, which is on my TBR. After I read the Peabody Sisters, most people read this as well because um, the Alcott family slash father was in that book. So amazing pickup. Sorry, there was probably some parts where it wasn't as interesting to watch but I just wanted to show you these books and um, I should be finishing the fifth season shortly so I probably should pick up um, continue Manhattan Beach but I recently got uh, a thousand women by Jim Fergus I think I believe and it's about the historical fi fiction based on this woman Louisa Dodds Louisa May Dodd, I think, um, or May Dodd's Diaries, where she was one of the 1,000 women that either volunteered or was, or was 
quote volunteered to go to this Indian tribe um, to help them acclimate to the U.S. and trade for a thousand horses. And this woman was in an asylum and so the government sent a lot of the women and I started reading it and it was really really good so I think I might read that next because I have the second follow-up on uh, NetGalley but that's getting ahead of myself anyways hope you're all having a great week I'll talk to you all soon bye